Welcome to Electro Online. Now here's a problem I really like. This is a nice problem. It came out of the JE main exams. And let's read it together to make some sense out of it. It deals with the initial and steady state current of a circuit. The current I at t equals zero and t equals infinity respectively for the given circuit is, and they give us four possible answers, and here's the circuit. Now notice they use the letter E for the battery. I prefer V for volt, but they put E for EMF. And notice it has four resistors, it has one inductor, and then they talk about current at time equals zero and current at time equals infinity. Infinity means when we've reached steady state. It doesn't mean that an infinite amount of time has gone by, just enough time for the circuit to reach its steady state value, or at least the current of the circuit to reach its steady state value. Now, what isn't very good here is they didn't put in a switch. If I was going to set this problem up, I'd probably put in a switch here like this. We're at t equals zero. The switch would close and current will begin to flow to the circuit. I think that's what they meant. They should have put in a switch. They didn't. Cause a little bit of confusion. Now, what I like about the circuit is the way it's drawn, it makes it kind of difficult to figure out what's going on. And sometimes it helps to redraw the circuit. Now, notice there are four nodes. We have node here, we can call that node A. Here, we can call this node B. There, let's call this node C. And let's call this node, node D. And let's redraw the circuit to try and make more sense out of it. All right, starting with this right here, we go from D to A. And so we have the battery, and let's put in the switch. And so we label that as E. Again, I prefer voltage. Then we get to node A, so we split up. So this here is node A. And then we split up and we go either to the one 5 ohm resistor or to the other 5 ohm resistor. So these are both two 5 ohm resistors. Notice that when we go through this resistor, we get to node B. So here we'll call that node B. And if we go the other direction, we get to node C. So let's call this node C. And then from B, let's ignore the inductor. We'll go through the 1 ohm resistor. So from B, we go through the 1 ohm resistor. And notice we get to D. So let's call this, uh, let's see here. We, we get together on both directions. So here we go to the 4 ohm resistor, and then we come back together. So let's call this here node D. And of course, node D is connected to this side of the battery. So then we come all the way around, like this. And that's our circuit. Well, hmm? oh yeah, I missed the D. I have to put D there. And then, of course, we come back to E, so we come back around like this. Of course, we haven't drawn the inductor yet. The inductor goes from B to C. So we have B here, we have C here, so here's the inductor. So notice that this circuit makes a whole lot more sense than that circuit, at least it does to B. So now we can see that we close the switch at time equals zero, and then current begins to flow, splits up between these two, then either goes to the inductor or not, goes to these two, come back together, and so forth. So now the key to the problem, at time equals zero, when the switch first closes at that moment, we had no current through the inductor. And remember, inductors oppose the change in current. So as soon as the switch closes, current doesn't immediately begin to flow in the inductor. At time equals zero, there's no current through the inductor. So we can say at that point, I equals zero. So I equals zero to the inductor. And it's as if, as if that inductor isn't there at t equals zero. So at t equals zero, the inductor becomes an open circuit. It's like it's not there. Which means we now have two sets of resistors in parallel. We have these two in series and these two in series. And then they're in parallel to one another. So we could say that our total is going to be equal to uh, 6 ohms parallel to 9 ohms. Which means that our total is equal to the product over the sum. So it would be 6 times 9 divided by 6 plus 9 which would be equal to 54 divided by 15, and they both can be divided by 3, that would be equal to 18 over 5. And then when we collect, uh, calculate the current, I equals V over R, so in this case V is E, and R is 
18 over 5, so that would be equal to 5e over 18. So that would be the current at time equals 0. So that would be the first one of the two, and which of these matches here? 5e over, 5e over 18. Wow. Oh no, we have two of those. So we have potentially B and C as being the only two possible answers. They both have 5e over 18 for the current at time equals 0. So let's say that you want to save time and now you want to guess which one it is. Well, I guess one of those two. However, if you now want to go to the next stage, you then go, well, at time equals infinity, what happens now at time equals infinity? Now, let me write it over here. At time equals infinity, L is now a short circuit. What do we mean by that is a pure inductor that has no resistance offers no resistance to a steady state current, which means that the current that goes to the battery, through the switch, and through these two resistors, notice that these two branches offer resistance to the current, and this one does not offer resistance to the current. So in other words, all the current would simply go round. Well, wait a minute. That is... Ah! <laughs> For a moment there, I'm saying, wait a minute, something is wrong here. But no, let me redraw that because then it makes more sense. At that point, we have a short circuit there. So what do we have now? Now we have this kind of circuit. We have a circuit that looks like this with the two 5 ohm resistors. Oh, that's a terrible looking resistor. There we go. And then we have a short circuit. Essentially, it becomes like this. And now we have a 1 ohm and a 4 ohm resistor. So now what we have is we have two sets of resistors that are, each of those are in parallel and then they're in series with each other. So now we can say that R total is equal to, take this resistance, which is the product over the sum, which is uh, 5 times 5 over 10 plus this one here, which is 1 times 4 over 5. So this would be equal to 2.5, so 25 divided by 10 is 2.5, and this is uh, 4 over 5, which is plus 0 0.8, which is equal to 3.3 .3 ohms. So now, when a lot of time has gone by, time is to infinity, we have steady state current, this becomes now like a short circuit, which means that now we have a circuit that looks like this, and that means the total resistance is equal to 3.3 .3 ohms. Now, again, I equals V over R, which is equal to E divided by 3.3 .3 over 1, which is the same as E divided by 33 over 10, which is equal to 10E divided by 33, if you want to get rid of the decimal point. There we go. So now we look for the second answer. When time is at infinity, essentially we've reached steady state, our circuit becomes like this. The resistance total now is this. The current calculated can be said as to be 10E over 33, which means this is the answer for the current when we're at steady state. So this is no longer true. The answer to the problem equals C. Now you would be hard pressed to do this in two or three minutes. And that's all the time they allow you for this problem, which is unfortunate, it's a beautiful problem, but it probably takes you a little bit more time to solve this one than it would uh, two or three minutes. But again, we're given these four possible answers. This is the circuit. What if we don't redraw the circuit? Because I like the circuit better than that. But what if we didn't redraw the circle? Well, first of all, what we can say is that if at t equals zero, this essentially becomes an open circuit. So like it's not even there. And now we have the current flowing through these two coming around back here. So you could probably do the problem without redrawing it, but hmm, I simply like looking at that one better because it's easier to work with. So I think I would spend the time to redraw the circuit. And then at time equals zero, L is open. When L is open, then we have the circuit that when this is gone, so let's assume that this is now gone. So that's easy to find the total resistance, I is V over R. Then when this becomes a short circuit, then we can redraw the circuit like this, find the resistance total quickly, calculate the current. I'd say I would just try to crank through it quickly, redraw the circuit, and calculate the two currents. But um, I don't think that can be done in two or three minutes. Well, 
That's it. That's how it's done. If you don't redraw it, is it harder to work out? It is harder. If you don't redraw the circuit, well, the first part may not be too bad. So you look at this. If you, for example, open this up, so like it's not even there, and current flows here through there around like this, I guess you can imagine that you have 6 ohm on one side and 9 ohm on the other side. So you have a 6 and a 9 ohm in parallel. So you go ahead and calculate this. Now let's say that it's a short circuit. That's the problem. So now let's say this is a short circuit like this. And now you look at it and it would be difficult to envision what the circuit now looks like without redrawing it like that. I think that's the hard part of it. And if you can't envision what the circuit looks like, you may falter in trying to get the right answer on that one. Yeah, I recommend redrawing it.